Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Hope you're all doing well. Today I have a follow-up story for you on the RTX 3060 and how it's going to be limiting the hash rate on those graphics cards in order to get them into more hands of gamers rather than miners. NVIDIA has since yesterday come forth and given some more information to sort of clarify the way that they're achieving this and how it is doing it to prevent it uh, from possibly being hacked by the miners themselves with hacked BIOSes, drivers, and things of the like. So we got a little bit more clarification on that, which all sounds really good. We also have a new update to Portal 2, of all things, getting the Vulkan API. That's an interesting one. And also we have a leaked uh, image of the 11th gen Intel packaging for their CPUs. Really exciting stuff on that one, of course. Uh, but yeah, we're really going to be mostly talking about the 3060 here and the hash rate and uh, sort of clarifying some stuff in the follow-up from the video from yesterday. So we're going to get into all of that news in just a moment. But first, today's video is brought to you by MMORC.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro, which you can get for just $15, as well as Office 2019 Pro and Office 365. And if you act right now, you can get an additional 27% off with my code JOK27 at checkout, and that'll knock the price down on Windows 10 Pro from $15.29 all the way down to $11.16. And of course, they accept a wide variety of payment from PayPal to credit cards to Bitcoin. So be sure to act now and hit up the links down in the description below. First up, though, we will be uh, talking about the RTX 3060, which, as I said at the start of the video and in yesterday's video, if you've heard by now, when these cards come out, they're going to have something done to them that is going to limit the hash rate of the card, meaning that if you try to use the card to mine cryptocurrency like Ethereum, the driver or the BIOS or the graphics card or whatever will be able to detect that you're doing that, and then it'll cut your hash rate basically in half. And someone actually already got their hands on an RTX 3060 early on, a guy by the name of Crypto Leo, who is a, I believe, Russian um, YouTuber and channel based on cryptocurrency primarily, already got his hands from uh, on, on a 3060 from a retailer in his area, a Zotac uh, graphics card. And even though he didn't have uh, a BIOS for the card, he had to hack a BIOS in order to get the card to work. But it still ended up limiting his hash rate, as you can see in this uh, screenshot here, if I could find it. There it is right here. A uh, little bit blurry, but you can see that the hash rate gets cut down to about 28 mega hash per second here. Uh, after starting off uh, quite higher than that, started off with like, like 42 mega hash. It looked like maybe it made a jump. To, uh, it was yeah, 41, 42. Dropped down to about 28, which would basically spell these cards are not super efficient um, you know, for mining, especially at the price that they're going to be at compared to what else is out in the market. And NVIDIA is going to be having their CX cards coming soon, which are going to be dedicated uh, just for miners. But the, you know, the big thing about this actually, this card actually already being out there and someone using it to mine, even though they don't have the NVIDIA driver, proves that the hash rate limiter is actually working even without the official driver for the RTX 3060, which NVIDIA has clarified yesterday via Brian Del Rizzo over on Twitter, who had started responding back to members of the tech press, and he had responded to Ryan Smith, and by responding he said, Hi Ryan, it's not just a driver thing, there is a secure handshake between the driver, the RTX 3060 silicon, and the BIOS firmware that prevents removal of the hash rate limiter. So that's going to be huge. So we talk about this in yesterday's video. If this was just a driver level thing, the drivers could very easily um, be hacked. And, you know, large mining operations are already known to create their own custom, custom BIOSes and custom drivers. So still not saying that this is a absolute silver bullet that'll completely stop people from using the RTX 3060 and future graphics cards for mining. It very well could. We just don't really know yet until it's out in the wild and see, you know, how secure this thing actually is. But the fact that it's not just at the driver level is a pretty big deal. It's going to make it a lot more difficult from your, you know, regular Joe from being able to hack one of these things and being able to use it for mining. So that's all really good information. And they also confirmed that this will not only work on Windows, because that was another thing that people brought up. It was like, oh, well, they'll just, you know, use it on, on Linux or whatever, and then, you know, it won't be an issue. Well, that's actually not the case, as it will work on Linux as well. And NVIDIA's 
uh, li Linux drivers are actually not open source, which means they have more control over what's available to the user, unlike AMD, who use open source drivers. So they may have a little bit more control, uh, at least at the driver level and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it, all good information, honestly. We're just going to have to wait and see once this card is out available to the public. And, you know, once you have thousands of tech nerds around the world, you know, trying to, even even if they're not miners, just seeing for the fuck of it, if they can get this thing removed just to say, hey, I, I did this thing to NVIDIA's card that they didn't want people to do. That's a possibility. I'm sure there are going to be people out there trying to do it just for the just for the thrills of it. Um, and then you're also going to have humongous multi-million dollar mining operations that are going to have their own people trying to work on this as well if they want to be able to use the 3060, um, you know, for mining Ethereum or whatever. Now, that also brings up the question about what about the other cards that are already out from NVIDIA? Now, obviously, NVIDIA cannot go ahead and easily implement something like this on already released hardware. Um, you know, not only would people with, you know, previous release cards just be able to go and download old drivers and use those anyway, but also they would probably have some pretty big legal issues on their hands if they sold a product to someone and then limited its performance by half in any one way whatsoever, whether it's for mining or for, uh, you know, for gaming or whatever, they would probably have some pretty big legal hurdles to jump over with previously existing products. Now, according to a famed leaker over on Twitter by the name of Copight7, uh, back in January, he had actually tweeted out that Jensen was going to be going to war uh, with with miners, and you know he didn't really give a whole lot of clarification on that. But now with these you know new cards and stuff like that, people started speaking up about it and asking questions about it, and he actually said that we could very likely see new variants of the 30, 3070, 3060 Ti, 3080, 3090, so on and so forth, which would have the same exact specs as the previous cards, except it would be a different model ID, and it would have this hash limiter built into it on future um, releases of the 3080, 3090. And they, they could very likely do this, you know, silently um, without really making a, a huge fuss about it, although I do think they should disclose that to the public in case people want to mine with them. Um, but that's... I think that's really the best case scenario there. I think if this whole hash rate limiter thing works on the 3060 as a proof of concept and they're not able to remove it very easily or at all, then I would love to see NVIDIA roll this out to the 3070, 3080, 3090, and any future cards that come out. And I would also hope that AMD does something similar um, for their graphics cards to be able to do something like this as well and then release dedicated uh, mining cards, which will unfortunately still be using Ampere GPUs on the NVIDIA side, uh, which there's already a shortage of. So we might still find ourselves in a shortage of being able to have graphics cards in the market anyway, but I do appreciate the fact that NVIDIA is being proactive in their approach um, with all of this. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on what you think about all that. Next up, we just have two really quick stories that I thought were interesting and worth noting. Um, the first one really was just a, something that I was interested in was Portal 2, which is a game I used to play a ton of. Like, And not even like when it, when it first came out, I played the main story. But then like three or four years later, me and my buddy discovered, you know, the massive amount of user created content for Portal 2, which I haven't touched in years. And I'm sure there's even more of it now. There's so much user created content on that game for single player as well as co-op. And there's... You can have so much fun. Portal 2 is an amazing game, and yeah, they're still supporting it to this day, uh, and now bringing in Vulcan support, which this game is not very difficult to run by any any stretch of the imagination on, on any modern hardware. You could probably run this very well on integrated graphics, probably 1080p max settings, if I'm being perfectly honest, on you know a, a new modern you know AMD APU or something. Probably be able to run this game absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, they added in Vulcan support, so theoretically it should get even better performance now than it was getting previously, and it's done through a command line, which I imagine you would do on Steam, put in a command line to get it to be able to run on Vulcan, and then it should improve your performance uh, maybe quite substantially, depending on the type of hardware that you uh, happen to be running. They also added in a 360 spin action and some other controller features, so just nice to see that after, you know, I think more than a decade now at this point, they're still putting out good patches and updates for Portal 2 and continuing to improve on the content. And as I said, the user content in that game, in game incredible. Most of you probably already own Portal 2. If you do and you haven't touched it in a long time, I highly recommend you reinstalling it 
just to go explore the the Steam user content, especially like co-op stuff if you have a buddy that you can jump on with. Just endless hours of just fun, just doing good puzzles and stuff. And it's it's a it's a real I don't know I love it. It's maybe not everyone does, but for me it's pretty great. Um, I'm gonna have to get back into it actually just to try out the Vulcan stuff. I'd be curious to see how it runs versus uh, I don't even was it Green DirectX 10? Was it even DirectX 11? I'm not even sure honestly if it was DirectX 11. It's the game is quite old. So next up and last uh, before we get out of here, not a super interesting story, but I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in on the end of the video is the 11th gen Rocket Lake desktop CPUs from Intel. Um, their packaging was leaked, which they and, and Intel's been getting very aggressive in the past few years with their packaging for quite a while. It was just all very the same. But I think they kind of got inspired by what AMD did with Ryzen. I think I think AMD Ryzen has pretty solid packaging. Um, it seemed, you know, for the time, at least when it came out three or four years ago, initially very modern. And then they had like the really cool boxes for like the high end, like thread ripper skews and stuff. So I think Intel is definitely sort of taking a page out of AMD's marketing playbook, um, in the past few years, um, really ever since Ryzen came out. And I think that continues along with this sort of style here. Um, kind of interesting looking jagged box thingy that's not going to sit on a shelf very well anywhere. <laughs> it's just, it's going to take up so much space on shelves is not going to sit flush up against one another but there it is that's the box leaked uh, by videocards.com and posted here over on uh, wccf tech so this is for the 11th gen uh cpus it looks like there's some new packaging here for maybe some of the for the older for the lower core cpus as well um but yeah these ones don't look anywhere near as elaborate uh as this jagged box thing here which you'll probably just end up putting on a shelf or throwing away or sticking in a closet somewhere until you need it at some point in the future when you change your CPU in about four or five years time. But that's all I've got for you guys today in the world of tech news. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. As always, though, I do look forward to reading through all your guys' comments and everything down, down below. Uh, we're basically snowed in here um, in New Jersey right now for the past two days, and we probably will be for the entire weekend. So make sure you leave a nice friendly comment if you made it all the way to the end of the video, and I'll maybe I'll reply to you. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time for another video.